What is consciousness? It is awareness. It is a state of being aware. Beyond all form, when you get down to the true I, it is a state of awareness. But how aware? That is what dictates everything. How aware? Because the more aware we become, the more we understand the reality we're experiencing. And if you are a manipulator that wishes to control the target population, you want to control that perception so it's as narrow as possible. And in that sentence, I've described the global conspiracy and why the few control the many. Because the beyond the world of the scene, which is absolutely tiny, as I'll come to, is infinite possibility. And you try to manipulate, hoax people who are opening their minds to beyond this reality and getting insight, inspiration, awareness from beyond this world of the scene. It's a nightmare. But if you, can, if you can herd people just into the world of the scene and get everyone to operate only on five sense levels and perceive everything through the five senses, then you can so control their perception that you can control them. So we can be having an experience, a point of attention called human, and interacting with this reality through what we call the five senses, but not be mesmerized, controlled, and limited by them because we can open our awareness beyond the five senses, out into that great field of possibility and probability and potentiality where they, we can get insight and understanding and intuitive knowing that the five senses do not provide. Or we can get so focused, so isolated in five sense reality alone that we self-identify with our labels as being who we are instead of being what the true I is experiencing. Now, the, at this point of attention also dictates our point of perception, and perception is what dictates everything, as I'll come to. That's why this whole global conspiracy is about hijacking human perception, because they know that from that everything else comes. And a point of attention and perception also becomes our point of self-identity. If we only perceive the five sense world and we look around us from a five sense perspective, then everything is apart from everything else. Nothing's connected, everything's random. And we are little me, I have no power, what can I do? And it's this control of our self-identity that ultimately controls our collective reality. Because these are two perceptions of self-identity. One says, I am all that is, has been, and ever can be, having an experience called my name, my culture, my income bracket, my religion. And this says, those labels are me, it's all I am. I'm just little me, I have no power. And because I have no power, I have to look up to authority to tell me what to think and tell me what to do because I do not have the capacity to do that because I'm just little insignificant me. And these two, what are nothing more than perceptions, will create dramatically different experiences because perception becomes experiences in ways I'm going to come to. And isolated consciousness, what I mean is the focus of attention is so much on the five senses that we cut off the influence of the greater self. Isolated consciousness is a manipulator's dream. That's why they want us there. 
because it's perception without radar, without context. This comes into this whole UFO, ex UFO extraterrestrial arena too, as I'll come to. Perception without radar. If your only perception, your only influence is five sense reality, then where are you going to look to to get your fix on this reality, who you are, where you are, what the hell is going on? You're going to look into this reality to get that information because it's the only reality you perceive there to be. And what comes back? The education system, the media, political speeches, Silicon Valley. And that's when we become in the world and of the world because this is the perception of this world is all there is. And you can't have context. And context is everything. Because you can see things as individual happenings and individual people. And in and of themselves, they look a certain way. But connect them together and how they relate to each other. Give them context. And those very same people, situation, organizations, happenings look totally different than they did before. So perception is the creator of reality. And that in the shadows, I would say ultimately non-human, knows that and it knows that if it can control our perception, it will control our reality. Because perception is where all life is played out and all experience is made manifest. Again, for reasons I'll come to. Leonardo da Vinci said, our knowledge has its origin in our perceptions. And to a certain extent that's true because our perceptions are dictating what knowledge or information we allow in and absorb and accept and make part of our reality in which we reject. So that is true, but you can look at it another way. That all our perception has its origins in our knowledge, in our information. Where do these perceptions come from? They come from information received. This might take the form of a personal experience. It might take the form of the nine o'clock news. It might take the form of some academic at a university. But from these sources of information, we construct our perception. So if you can control those sources of information, you massively impact upon people's perceptions of reality. Knowledge is from information and from information and knowledge comes perception and that knowledge doesn't have to be accurate it just happens to be what you believe and this is the key perceptions of frequencies uh, so every thought every emotion is a frequency it's well known now and the nature of the thought, the nature of the, freq of the uh, emotion, the nature of the intent behind it dictates the frequency. This is why people are, uh, who are in states of anxiety or depression, they say, I feel so, I feel so, so heavy today. Yes, because that dictates a low vibrational state, thus it feels heavy. And together, perceptions operate on different frequency bands according to the nature of the perception. So that perception of the world and self-identity will be a very narrow band of frequency. Why? Because that is reflecting a very narrow band of possibility, a narrow band of self-perception. This is vital to how we create reality, as we'll see. Now that perception of self and reality is a much more expanded, much higher frequency band. And therefore, it will manifest a different reality. And the nature of the frequency that we're operating on 
dictates whether we are stuck in that box, that five sense perceptual prison, or whether we start to access reality um, beyond it and start to be inspired by knowing, intuitive knowing, by, by uh, insight, by an awareness beyond the five sense world of media and mainstream everything. As Einstein said, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency to the reality you want and you can't help to get that frequency. And so perception is all. And this is the gateway. This is the gateway that opens to going beyond this mind prison we call human society. Accidents happen. That's what everyone says. But in a quantum universe, there are no such things as accidents, only possibilities and probabilities folded into existence by perception. Because our perceptions and the frequencies they operate on dictate what we manifest as experience. This is Werner Heisenberg, one of the um, pioneers of quantum physics. He said, atoms are elementary particles. Themselves are not real, and they're not. They form a world of potentialities or possibilities rather than one of things or facts. This is this realm of potentialities and possibilities that we're interacting with all the time and how we interact with it is dictated by our perception and our self-identity. This field, this infinite field of consciousness, of awareness that I'm talking about beyond the world of the scene is this quantum field of potentialities and possibilities. And how much we interact with that, how far we get out into it, dictates our experience and our possibility. If we perceive ourselves to be little me, I've got no power, everything's apart from everything else, I know my betters, I know my masters, I must obey them, then that narrow band of self-identity becomes the narrow band with which we interact with this field of potentialities and possibilities. And thus, what we manifest out of that potentiality is an experience that matches the range of and state of perception which we are um, interacting with that field. If you see yourself as infinite awareness having an experience, potentiality of all that is, has been and ever can be, then you start to interact with this quantum field of possibility and probability in a much more expanded way, a much more high frequency way, and thus the experiences and possibilities that we pull out of that field become massively expanded compared with the previous picture because they're matching the perception of self and reality. This is why when people go through this process, many people in this room will, have, will know what I'm talking about. When they start to what's called awaken, in other words, break out of the program, they start to realize the synchronicity that suddenly comes into their lives. The amazing, quote, co coincidences, the kind of miraculous things that happen. And they say, why didn't it happen before? Because you were there before. Now you're there. So the potentiality of manifestation becomes massively expanded. And it is only limited by our sense of limitation, nothing else. And you see this as a phrase I use in the books. What you believe, you perceive. And what you perceive, you experience. And we see it in the placebo effect. Where people um, take a certain drug in a test and they take a sugar pill. And people on the sugar pill respond in the way the drug's supposed to have made them respond. And I've seen studies where people have been put on these blind trials, these placebo trials, for um, um, boldness remedies. And the people on the sugar pills have started growing hair. 
because the placebo is a belief in the effect which becomes the effect. People go to places like Lourdes and uh, some of them have what are called miraculous healings through to divine intervention. But is it? Is it divine intervention or is it a belief in divine intervention? Because our perceptions become our experienced reality. Fire walking. I've seen people, many people in this room, maybe I've seen it too. People walking through fire. That's impossible, mate. You can't do that. I've seen it without getting burned. But if you can walk through the fire with a belief, a perception that you're going to get burned, then they'll be calling an ambulance. You'll be burned. But go into another level of reality that doesn't interact with potentiality and possibility in the same way, and you can walk through fire and not get burned because an illusion can only burn an illusion if you believe, perceive it can. This is the power we have that has been systematically and is systematically uh, deleted from us, from cradle to grave. The game of life, perception is all. Bill Hicks, a great American comedian, died far too young. All matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. We are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream and we are the imagination of ourselves. And our imagination of self, our perception of self becomes our experienced self. And this is why this whole system of control is absolutely focused on hijacking our imagination of ourselves. Who creates our reality? We do, but there's a big proviso on that which I'll come to as we go along. How do we do it? How do we create this reality? When you look at computers and the internet and Wi-Fi, that is just a technological extension, a technological expression of how we create the reality we think is so real. There's probably Wi-Fi in this building, and if there is, where is it? No one can see it. And if you said to someone who knew nothing about computers or Wi-Fi or internet, in this room is a field of possibility, probability and information that you can access anywhere in the world and pull onto a screen that anyone anywhere in the world with a computer can see. People didn't know about computers, they didn't know about Wi-Fi, they'd say, you're mad. Where is it? My five senses cannot see it, therefore it cannot exist. Where is it? But of course, when you get to a position today where people know about Wi-Fi, they know about uh, uh, computers and the internet, and you say, you know, there's a field of information in this room and you can, yeah, 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 Wi-Fi, yeah, I know about that. And you know the difference between load of rubbish, mate, and yeah, yeah, I know about that. Information. That's all it is. And we are interacting with this infinite field of consciousness, of possibility and potentialities in exactly the same way. And it's like cosmic Wi-Fi. And... Uh, I call it also the cosmic internet. We interact with it on a waveform level, on an electromagnetic level, on an electrical level.